Hey guys, what is up? My name is Nicholas Yeo and I'm a core anesthetic trainee in the Glacier Wall Infirmary in Scotland. And today I'm so happy to have the opportunity to bring you guys to my workplace. Now, over the past few months, whenever I chat to my family and friends that I'm an anesthetic doctor, no one really knows what I normally do in my workplace. So I thought it would be great to show you guys what normally goes on behind these closed doors. So as you can see here, I'm currently in one of the operating theaters in the hospital. And behind me here is my bread and butter, my everyday partner, the anesthetic machine. And today, I'll be showing you guys how this marvelous invention helps keep you breathing whenever you're asleep. So there'll be three big questions that I'll be answering today. Firstly, how do we keep you asleep? And how do we deliver guests whenever you're asleep? Next, what are the most important vital monitoring you do whenever you guys are asleep? And lastly, how do we keep the lungs breathing whenever you're asleep? So without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's first talk about oxygen delivery. Whenever you guys are asleep for a big surgery, depending on the type of surgery and also how healthy you are, your oxygen requirements might go up and we need to be able to deliver a higher percentage of oxygen based on your needs. And that's why we have uh, gas supply. So what we have here are various pipelines that you can see piping down from the top there. We have white for oxygen, blue for nitrous oxide, black and white for medical air, and yellow for vacuum. So there are several safety mechanisms in place that we make sure that we deliver the right gas to the right patient. Firstly, these gas pipelines are connected to what we call serrator connection ports. And this would only allow oxygen to be connected to oxygen and vice versa, so that we will not be giving you the wrong gas. And as we come down to where the gas pipes meets the machine, there's also a safety mechanism in place here called NIST or non-interchangeable screw threads. And this makes sure that only the oxygen pipe can be screwed in into the oxygen delivery system in the machine. Now there are also other bits and bobs at the back of the machine here. As you can see here, there is an oxygen cylinder and this is an alternative oxygen supply whenever the main gas line pipe fails that can still be able to give you 100% oxygen of concentration. We also have an ambu bag here which would allow us to ventilate you whenever power in the machine fails. So as you can see, there are many safety mechanisms in place to make sure that we deliver the right gas to the right patient and also an alternative means of supplying oxygen or ventilation whenever power fails or if you run out of gas. Now that I've shown you guys where the gas goes in, let's have a look at where the gas goes out. Okay, so we are back to the front of the machine here. Let's talk about all these gadgets and outlets that are at the front of the machine from the right to the left. Firstly, what we have up here is the alternative oxygen supply. Remember we talked about the oxygen canister at the back to use as an alternate means of oxygenation. So that's where we turn it on here. It's not gonna work because we've turned the oxygen cylinder at the back off. Below here, we have the power supply. It's guarded by a plastic bracket so we would not accidentally turn the machine off whenever we are putting someone off to sleep. Right, and what we have here beside the alternative oxygen supply is uh, suction, which is connected to the yellow port on top there. So turn it on, and that's the suction working. Now, most of the time we use suction to suck out the secretions or saliva at the back of the throat before we wake you up because we don't want you to be choking on your own secretions and saliva whenever we take a tube out of your windpipe. Okay, we also have an additional output for oxygen here. That's me turning that on, you can hear the oxygen coming out and that's to normally give uh, patients who are awake or slightly sedated some oxygen through a face mask or a nasal cannula if needed. Okay, so I had to move the camera a little bit so that you guys are able to see the screen here. Most of the time when we deliver gases to our patients, it's normally through this breathing circuit here which I'll be talking about later. So different machines have different ways of delivering the concentration of oxygen and also the flow of uh, the gas which goes into our patients. In this machine here, it's all touch screen. So if you can tap on the oxygen, you can actually dial it all the way up to 100%. If you tap on the flows here, you can dial it up all the way to 
15 liters per minute and that's what the maximum is for this machine here. Now, if you're wondering what keeps you asleep during your operation, it's this vaporizer here. And that delivers anesthetic gas to put you asleep or to remain asleep. You can always dial the concentration through the machine here, all right? There are other machines which uses the dial which turns on the anesthetic agent. But basically, this is what keeps you asleep. Right, so let's start talking about vital monitoring. It's not an operating theatre if you can't hear all these beeps going on in the back. Now, it's really important that we monitor your vital signs during an operation because it gives us a good idea on how you're responding to the surgery. So right at the top there in green, that's a heart tracing, which also shows my heart rate of 93, just because I'm extremely nervous when shooting this video. And I also had a coffee about 20 minutes ago. And below that is the oxygen saturations, which is measured by a pulse oximeter, as you can see here, connected to my hand. So it does give us a good rough measure on how oxygenated the body is. And lastly, down in the red there is supposedly your blood pressure monitoring. So we have a blood pressure cuff connected to every patient which runs every 5 minutes or even earlier if we feel that our patient needs uh, constant monitoring because sometimes blood pressure can drop to various reasons during the operation and it's really important to see how well your body is functioning during surgery. Right guys, so save the best for last. Let's talk about the breathing circuit. Now, whenever we put our patients to sleep during a surgery, sometimes we do give a paralytic agent which prevents you from taking a deep breath in by yourself. And that is why we need an alternative mode of ventilation to number one, deliver the anesthetic gas to keep you asleep, and number two, to ventilate the lungs so that you can actually exchange oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide when you're asleep. So what we have at the back here is called a bag and bottle ventilator. And this ventilator helps to push air into the lungs. This is an artificial lung that I have here. Help push air into the lungs and also deliver anesthetic agent whenever our patients are asleep for surgery. Right, so this breathing circuit is called a circle circuit. What happens here is firstly, when the ventilator pushes air into the lungs, it comes out through a one-way valve into the lungs through this Y-piece connector. So air goes up on one side and because of the one-way valves exit on the other side, air would then zip into the machine down to this soda lime canister. So what this soda lime canister does is that it removes carbon dioxide when the patients breathe out so that the air that's recirculating into the system has a lower concentration of carbon dioxide. And of course, as the air gets recirculated in the system, fresh gas is also added depending on what we set on the machine. So it's a more efficient system where we, could, where we would be able to reuse the gas that's pumped into the system and removing out carbon dioxide so there's minimal waste of the gases and also the anesthetic agent. So there are also different types of ventilatory modes that we can set in delivering the gases to our patients. As you can see here, the easiest way to try and understand this is when you go up to a coffee machine. You know, you can actually have your coffee, Americano, latte, cappuccino, flat white, basically the same thing. So there are different ways of delivering oxygen or gases to our patients. But in the end, it does the same thing. It delivers the gas that we need. We ventilate the lungs and we keep you asleep. Right, we've come to the end of the video. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope I've provided some information or deep insight into what we do as an anesthetist in the hospital. If you like what I do, please give a like and subscribe. If not, enjoy your day. See you guys next time.